if you paint on a deep edge canvas like this, whether it's in oils or acrylics or watercolours like me, you don't really need to frame your picture at all because you can make the edges part of, of the image. However, you might decide that you want to, to give it a little more substance or to help it um, stand out from the wall that it's hung on and to protect the edges of, of the painting. Now, you might think, oh yeah, that's fine and I'll have to go down to the local framers. That's really expensive. But you can easily buy them online, made to your measurements and then pop your picture in yourself. I want to show you how easy that is and I'm going to show you two different methods, one on this little white one and one on the black one behind. My name's Liz Chatterton. I'm a watercolour artist based in Berkshire and every week I bring you a tip or trick that I wish someone had told me about ages ago. And this week it's just how easy it is to frame your canvases or your wooden panels. I thought you might be interested to see how easy it is to finish off your canvas in what I call a tray frame, but it's also called a, a floating frame. And all it is, is a very simple frame like this. These are ready made. And you put your, your canvas in and you leave this sort of shadowed area around it and it makes it look like the, the canvas is floating within that frame. And I like it because I always paint the edges of my canvases. They are designed just to hang without any framing. Or of course you can add a frame and that adds a bit more sort of substance to it and it can stop it sort of getting lost on a wall. I also have a larger black frame which is somewhat different. Again, it's just a ready-made one. And for this, this is what I'm, I'm going to put my goldfinch in. And again, it's just the same idea of just finishing it off, setting it apart. And these ones absolutely do need to be framed because they're only on a, a narrow um, board in this case. It's a, a wooden birch panel. And I think it looks really mean if you don't frame them. So first things first, you just need something to protect your painting because it's going to be face down and you don't want that to get damaged. Your frame should come with, with fixings, but what you need in this case, they very cleverly give you little Velcro fixings and that means you can just position it in the right place to start with. You need four long screws that'll go through the frame and into the back of the canvas. You need a couple of D-rings and little screws so that um, you can put a hanging system and a bit of cord. When you order your frame from the manufacturer, you need to decide how much of gap you want round it. I think about a centimetre is nice. So this came from Frame Express and they said that they always add to the the size of your canvas they are between 0.8 and 1 centimeter for me that wasn't enough so I instead of saying this was 25 centimeters I said it was 26 centimeters so that's enough to give me my centimeter gap do think about that because if it was really snug say like you know if I put it right to the corner I don't think it would look so nice. You wouldn't get that floating effect. It needs space. So all we have to do is flip our painting over and then these Velcro dots just go in pairs into the corner. Okay, so we've got those four Velcro dots. Then we grab our frame. Make sure we've got it the right way. There's my signature. And now we have to line it up so that we've got an even gap all the way round. I am doing this by eye. And just to make sure my eyes are not deceiving me, I might turn it round and just make sure that's even. When you think it's even, just press it down in place. You can now see the effect of it. So all you need to do is basically put a screw through the moulding 
into the stretcher bar. You must make sure you don't do is put it in such a way that the screw comes through the, the little shadow area because that will be really, really annoying. The moulding is very soft wood so you can make just using an awl start a hole you don't need any pre-drilled holes though I guess if if you wanted to you could pre-drill and then I'm going to put my longer screws and just screw that I'm holding the picture so that's in place and just going to screw that down so we've got the one screw in place and now we just need to do the other three so all we have to do now again flip it over is put our little d-rings on now in the olden days people used to say to put it about a third of the way down i think that tends to flip it forward so i'm going to just put it hmm, about that far from the top which is about i don't know about eight centimeters on this little frame and i'm putting it about halfway in the width of the molding so let's have a little hole to start there and then if i put my thumb in the same place there it doesn't have to be super accurate and then just screw that in place and now we've just got to thread our cord through and tie it off nice and tightly with a good secure knot just doing a reef knot it's a bit tricky on your own because you're trying to keep it nice and tight because what you don't want is for the cord to show when it's tight you don't obviously want it to show above the edge of the frame so i've done a reef knot and then i like to just do a little single overhand knot as close to it as possible and let me just do that and i'll show you and explain why So I've put a little knot each side of the reef knot. So should this cord slip, that little knot will stop it slipping through. And that's the only reason I do that. So I could cut off the ends, but what I don't want is them all fraying out like that. So best thing to do is just melt off the ends. so that uh, they, it doesn't all unravel. Do go careful that you don't burn yourself in that process. Basically, is that? Do you agree that it's a really nice presentation? There are a couple of things to think about. Frames get chipped very easily, especially at the corners. And something like this white wood frame is so soft. You saw as I was putting the holes through how soft the wood is. So do be careful if you're taking them to exhibitions, make sure you wrap things up properly. When you're storing them, just go careful because it's really, really annoying if you, you've damaged a frame. The other thing is if you are selling your pictures and you're selling them somewhere that has commission, do think about how much you add on for framing. So say you're with a gallery, most galleries take 50%. Um, as, as commission which is obviously quite a lot so you would therefore have to add on double the price of framing if the frame cost you 20 pounds you must put on 40 pounds because by the time the, the gallery has taken off their 50 percent you will only get 20 pounds back and you could find yourself out of pocket very quickly if you get your, your prices wrong. Okay, let's do the bigger one. And again, I'm just protecting that because what I don't want is for the surface of my painting to be damaged. So this frame is fixed in a slightly different way. 
again it just sits in there so that's easy enough but the fixings that have come from the manufacturer are different for a start they've sent this sort of uh, picture wire which I really don't like I just find it really scratchy so I am going to put that to one side so I've got all the fixings eight little screws four of these Z pieces uh, two D rings of the D rings and two longer screws for the D-rings. Flip that over. So basically, there isn't enough depth on this moulding. It's hard to see because it's black, but on the white moulding I used, it was a lot deeper and I could just screw through the moulding from the back into the back of the picture. That isn't possible here. And that's why we've got these little things. Each of those basically goes in the middle of the side like this. And then I have to screw through that onto the frame and screw through the bit that's on onto the back of the board or the canvas say so this is a birch panel but it would be exactly the same on canvas canvas is usually a bit easier because the stretcher bar is actually a bit thicker it gives you more sort of room to play i think it's easiest and again i'm just doing this by eye to screw into the picture frame first so I'm just making holes at roughly halfway along the side. Then just need to screw that into the frame. Do that on all four sides. You can see that I have those four holders in place. It's going to even that up. That looks good. Now I'm going to just use my awl to make a little starter hole. Do this one at a time because the back of my panel is quite narrow. This is a bit tricky. As I say with a canvas you've got a bit more to play with. You're going to have to come in at a slight angle on this one just because the tolerance isn't great. And that is all nice and firm. I'm just going to tighten this one up. There we go. You can see that's all in place. Make sure we've got it up the right way. And we've just got to put our D-rings on. So this, again, say, usually they would say about a third down. I think that's too far. I reckon about 10 centimetres on this would be pretty good. Or, well, let's go for the length of that little screwdriver. Just make my little starting hole there. Screw that into place. Move it around. What do we say? The length of the screwdriver. Mark it with my thumbnail. Just do my little starter hole. They are in place. Now we just need the cord. Just a word about cord. You need to use picture cord that will not stretch and that has a high enough break weight. So the break weight means how much pressure do you have to put on it before it will break. And this is something like 250 pounds. Now my pictures don't weigh that much. But what would be dreadful is for the cord to snap or stretch. You don't want it to stretch over time and you certainly don't want it to snap. So on this larger frame, I've just done three overhand knots and then I'm going to put that little anti-slip device, which is just a single little knot close by. 
come over here. I could of course put it double through and just tie the ends but that's not necessary. So I've just come through. I'm doing that as nice and taut because I don't want it showing above the the frame when it's hung and I'm doing three knots to make sure it's really secure and just tying that final little knot. Let's get nice and close. That was three overhand knots and then just one little knot in case it slips. And again, I'm just going to melt off the ends there. Oops. Just to stop it unraveling. There we go. And there we go. That is my goldfinch all framed up and ready to go.